normal probability distributions in GeoGebra. That's what we're covering today. First off, I'm going to tell you what it is GeoGebra does for you, and then we're going to go ahead and see how the actual website works. I'm going to walk you through step by step along with multiple examples to show you all possible scenarios in using the normal distribution with GeoGebra. Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni and this is Probability and Statistics. Like I said, today we're going to be taking a look at GeoGebra again, except this time we're going to be doing normal distributions. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right into the content. So remember, we're actually going to be doing all of this work on GeoGebra.org. So if you want to head there now on a separate tab, go for it. That way you'll be ready when we get to the practice problems in just a minute. But remember, what is it that GeoGebra is doing here? Well, it is solving probability distribution questions that fall in the pattern of a normal bell-shaped curve, which you see right now on the screen. Now remember, in the middle of that bell-shaped curve is your mean or your average of the situation. And as you get further away from that average, less and less people will fall in that range. So you'll notice if this were like a histogram, your high point is in the middle and then it actually falls down as you drift further and further from the average. Now this normal curve uses this formula that has been mathematically calculated so that the area underneath the curve actually equals one. And why would we want that? Well, then if we want to know what percent of people fall in a certain range on this curve, we can just find the area of the curve in that range. Now, since the whole curve adds up to one, if I look at any given piece of it, the area of that piece is going to be the percent of people that are represented. Now, don't worry because you're not going to be using that formula because that's actually what GeoGebra is going to be doing for us. GeoGebra goes ahead and takes this normal curve with that formula and it goes ahead and helps us find the exact percent of people that fall in a given range on the curve. So now let's go ahead and dive in. We're at geogebra.org. And once you're here, go ahead and scroll down to where it says GeoGebra Classic. And that's what we want. So that's where we're going to click. And it's going to bring us to a new screen. And either one of two things will happen. Either a pop-up window will give you options of where to go from there, or it won't pop up. If it does pop up, go ahead and hit probability because that's where we want to be. But if it does not, then go up in the top right-hand corner of the screen where there are three lines. Click on those and go down to perspectives. Once you click on perspectives, go ahead and click probability, and that will bring you to the screen that where we want to be. Now, once you're here, you'll notice they already have a normal curve, but it's set at zero and with a standard deviation of one. So we're going to need to change that to fit our individual question. Then from there, they have the typical three things in the bottom left-hand corner that we're used to. One, it has this ability to shade to the left. It has this one to shade to the right. And this one allows us the shade in between two numbers that we tell it. So let's go ahead and start by putting in the information from this question up above. So this question tells us that on average, a person has their cell phone for a year and a half before they go ahead and get a new one with a standard deviation of about a quarter, so 0.25. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We got our year and a half, so 1.5, and we have our standard deviation of 0.25. Once we have that in, you'll notice it plugged it into the formula for us and generated the curve that we need. Now we need to tell it what range we actually want to find the area for. Now in this example, it says less than one. Now remember, less is always to the left and more is always to the right. So in this case, we're going ahead and shade to the left. So that's what we're clicking. I'm making sure it's there. And it's already set at one, but let's go ahead and plug one in and hit enter anyway. And you'll notice that gives us 0 0.028. In other words, there's about a 2.28% chance that someone would buy a new cell phone in a year or less. Well, let's go ahead and knock out a few other examples can I, so I can show you each of the three options down the bottom left-hand corner. So first off, for our next question, we're going to go ahead and look at this one that says two or more years instead. So the only thing I need to change in this case is switch from our shade to the left to shading to the right. Now, once I have shade to the right, it's still set at that one, so we need to change it, because in this question, we say two or more. So we're gonna switch that to a two and hit enter. Now, again, you'll find out that it is 0 0.0228, and that's because we're actually the same number of standard deviations to the right as we just were to the left. So again, this is gonna be about a 2.28% chance that we would randomly select a person that would have a cell phone um, for two years or longer before they got a new one. Now, let's go ahead and check out one of the more challenging questions. 
This next one talks about being in between two numbers. So in that case, the only difference here is that we're gonna be plugging in an extra number. So I hit the in between button to get where we wanna be. And in this case, we're gonna go from 1.7 to two. So let's go ahead and go from 1.7 up to our number two. Now you'll notice that in the picture, it shades exactly what I want. Because remember, this is finding the area under the curve because that's gonna represent our percent of a population. And we get an answer that 18.91% of the population will be getting a cell phone between 1.7 years and two years after they just got their most recent phone. Now, there is one challenging question that goes along with this type, and that's the next one we're going to look at. Now, if you notice, this one says outside the range of 1.3 and 2. Now, the problem is GeoGebra doesn't do outside of a range. So I have that picture here for us to see what that would look like to shade both the left and right side. There's actually two ways you could handle this. You could either A, shade to the left and go ahead and find that answer. So we would shade to the left of 1.3. And that tells us 21.19%. And then we can go ahead and shade to the right of the two, so we actually already had that answer from before, but let's go ahead and put it in again. And that gives us the 0 0.0228 that we were used to. So we could take those two and add them together. A second way you could do a question where it has the outside wings like this is to go ahead and hit the in between, and we could change this from in between 1.3 to one, or sorry, to two in this case, and hit enter. And that tells us 0.7654. Now, that's from here to here. So if I want to know outside of that, conveniently, we know that this whole curve adds up to one. So if I just do one minus 0.7654, that's going to give me my answer. So there's two different ways you can handle that last one because GeoGebra does not do both sides and outside. So you have to do it either this way of finding the middle and subtracting it from one, or you have to just go ahead and find the left side, find the right side and add them together. Either way, it's going to give you the same answer. Do you feel like you know GeoGebra a little bit better? Good, then go ahead and hit that like button below to let me know. Now remember, this has been a video on how to find normal distributions on GeoGebra. So we are looking at a bunch of different probabilities, but this isn't the only video I do. So if you wanna see a bunch of other math videos about statistics, ACT prep or anything like that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. And you can see my new videos each and every week. Remember, my name is Daniel Caproni and this has been Probability and Statistics. I hope you have a fantastic day.